somebody over here to the left. I'm very happy to join Senator Heinrich and a number of other people who are advocates for something that's really important. Uh, I will say, uh, and he will be introduced by Senator Heinrich, but uh, Rhett Buttle is a Nevadan. Uh, he went to uh, Cheyenne High School. Uh, he campaigned for me when he was a very, very young boy. He canvassed for me, and he's been polit politically active since, and I've been proud of all the work you've done at George Washington University, my alma mater and stuff for the, in the White House, so very happy for you. <clears throat> uh, when I first spoke with President Obama um, about Basin and Range and the city, which is in Basin and Range, he said, explain, explain the city to me. I said, I can't, and it's really hard to do. But you can see the beauty of uh, what we now have as a designated as a national monument. It's about 750,000 acres. It's just stunningly beautiful. Um, but uniquely, part of that is something called the city. The city was constructed over 38 years by one of America's great artists. Michael Heiser is world renowned, and he devoted much of his life to working very, very hard building this monument that people for generations to come will say it'll be there forever, as will the rest of the national monument that the president designated. This is one of the few areas in America that's untouched, and it basically is untouched. Two basins surrounded and bisected by mountain ranges is representative of the Nevada that I love and was born in. This beautiful area is the backdrop for the city that I've already described. Um, in this 750,000 acres, there's great artwork in addition to the city. But the artwork was done not 38 years ago, but hundreds and hundreds of years ago by Paiute Indians. And it's carved in the, and painted on the rocks throughout that area. Protecting this area was the right thing to do because we now get to share this with our children, our children's children, and for generations to come. But this report that's gonna be a, talked about a little bit today uh, protecting these national wonders is also the right thing to do for the economy of our country. It is something that is um, really hard to comprehend um, the beauty of the area and why, and all you have to do is look at pictures here and have someone explain this to you because these national monuments provide a vital economic opportunity for rural communities and small businesses. Average annual visitation to national monuments as pointed out in this very, very thorough report. Typically triples over the decade after the designation. This provides new opportunities for many rural communities, providing the outdoor recreation activities and tourism the mountains bring. Too often we only view land as a value, only valuable when it's somebody's digging at it or drilling it or logging on it, but that's really not true. The natural beauty is something we must protect, and that's what President Obama has done. I've long been convinced that there is value in keeping some of our nation's places wild, pristine, and that's why I worked hard over the years to now we have about four million acres of wilderness in Nevada. Uh, when I first came to Congress, we had about 70,000 acres. So this report demonstrates, in addition to being an intangible value to our quality of life, Protecting our lands bring real opportunity for local economies. Senator Heinrich. Thank you, Senator Reed. And I want to say a special thank you to Small Business Majority for being here today uh, to talk about this very important uh, economic report. 
I am very proud of the work that I did hand in glove with local communities to uh, advocate for the creation of two new national monuments in New Mexico. The Rio Grande del Norte National Monument in uh, Taos County, in northern New Mexico, that was designated in 2013, and the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks uh, National Monument in southern New Mexico in 2014. Um, I would encourage you to look at these two landscapes. I think it's pretty self-evident why they're so special to my constituents. And um, I would point out that these are your lands. And one of the reasons why I printed these two photos is because these are public lands that belong to the entire uh, nation. And I would encourage all of you to come and visit. They are truly spectacular. Uh, I was meeting with somebody who was visiting New Mexico recently, and they said, I'm going to be in Taos. Where should I go hike? And I said, you know, a lot of people love to hike up in the mountains, but I would encourage you to go to this bridge over the Rio Grande Gorge and then hike south along the rim of the Rio Grande Gorge and watch the cliff on the other side because you will see one of the most spectacular bighorn sheep herds in the country. And sure enough, I heard afterwards that uh, they were not disappointed. And typically when you make that hike, you see soaring golden eagles, bald eagles uh, that are uh, hunting along the river as well. It's, it's truly a spectacular landscape. But as the small business majority um, has pointed out, these are also incredibly important developments for local small business. And in looking at Taos, the year after the designation, Taos, uh, the Taos area saw a 40% increase in visitors. They saw a 21% increase in their lodgers tax revenue. And they saw an 8.3% increase uh, in gross receipts revenue from the accommodations and food service sector. So um, this proves once again that while these lands belong to all of us, to all of you as well as to all of my constituents, it is our local communities that get to benefit from the economic activity that happens as a result of these designations. And so I'm excited and want to thank Renee Frank for being here today from Las Cruces. Uh, she's a member of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce uh, to talk about their local economy. Almost two years into the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks uh, designation, local businesses in the Las Cruces and Mesilla areas are using this new monument in their promotional materials, they're fielding questions from customers and visitors, and they're introducing new products directly related to the monument. Um, I want to thank Small Business Majority for highlighting this important activity. And their report, as you will hear, shows that the 11 national monuments that have been designated by this president um, to protect their natural resources, their historical and their cultural resources, have created $156 million in brand new economic activity, as well as creating 1,820, almost 2,000 new jobs that didn't exist before. Visitors who traveled to these new national monuments for their incredible outdoor recreation opportunities, their history and their culture, bring these tourism dollars to our local communities. These new visitors are great for local companies that specialize in sporting gear, in guiding visitors in their newfound hiking, hunting, and fishing adventures, and they fill beds in hotels and they eat at local restaurants. I know that in my home state of New Mexico, our public lands are major drivers of our tourism industry. Outdoor recreation alone accounts for $6.1 billion annually in consumer spending in a state of only 2 million people. It's also directly responsible for 68,000 jobs in a state of only 2 million people. The President's National Monument designations put two places on the map, literally. And it will be communities like Taos and Cuesta, Mesilla and Las Cruces that will now be destinations for visitors from around the country and around the world. So I have no doubt that future generations will be grateful for the extensive efforts of these broad local coalitions, for the local small businesses who made this possible, and these national monuments will continue to protect those resources, but also preserve our local economies. And with that, I think I'm going to turn things over to Rep. Buttle. 
Well, thank you to both Senator Heinrich and Senator Reid. We really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Rep Buttle. I'm the president of Small Business Majority. We are a national small business advocacy organization that is founded and run by small business owners. And today, I uh, want to talk a little bit about the report that we're releasing today, but want to be quick because I mostly want you to hear from our wonderful small business owners who've flown in from all across the country to share a little bit about their experience. So today we're releasing a report which formally looks at the economic impact of these designated national monuments. The report found that between 2011 and 2015, nearly 3.9 million individuals visited these monuments. These 10 designated monuments included in the study had a total economic impact of about $156.4 million, and I think you heard Senator Heinrich mention that. Considering these benefits, it's no surprise that additional research that we've done, additional polling, has found broad support for national monuments from small business owners. For instance, 65% of small business owners believe designating new national monuments will enhance local jobs in their economies. You're going to hear some stories about that from our small business owners who are behind me. Additionally, some of our polling found that 75% of small business owners in Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, and New Mexico support designating more public lands as national monuments to ensure protections of the regions and to bring money to their local economies. So I'll pause there, and I'd like to quickly turn it over to Renee Frank from New Mexico, who will share a little bit more about her story. Thank you. My name is Renee Frank. I'm a real estate broker with Steinborn and Associates in Las Cruces, New Mexico, the southern part of the state. I'm also one of the founding members of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, which is a group of, of small business owners and entrepreneurs that have been actively involved in supporting measures that benefit our local economy. As someone whose livelihood depends on the strength of the local real estate market and the local economy, I'm here today to talk about how national monuments can inject vibrancy into a community and provide growth opportunities for small businesses. In 2014, President Obama designated the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument in our county in southern New Mexico. Since then, real estate sales have increased steadily uh, month over month over previous years, and just recently we experienced our biggest month of sales since 2009. The word is out. People are discovering that there are interesting things to do in southern New Mexico and places to see. Since the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks has been designated as a national monument, we're guaranteed that they will continue to be a beautiful resource for our community. National monuments create local growth opportunities, and I have no doubt that small business owners around the country can benefit from this as ours has. Thank you. Next up is Rose Langenspian. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Rose Langenspian and I am a small business owner from Sacramento, California, which is a very short distance from the Berryessa Snow Mountain National Monument. As a small business, my professional success is tied to the economic success of our region. The benefits of Berryessa National Monument extends way beyond its protected areas, basically because of its increased visibility as a national monument, it has stimulated and encouraged um, increased tourism, and, um, and it has enhanced its local economy. Supporting the protection of the amazing landscape of Berryessa Snow Mountains makes perfect sense the economic growth of my region and the enhancement of opportunities are only a few named benefits. As for my business, I've been able to include Berryessa National Mount Monument as one of the many wonders of my region to motivate qualified candidates from other areas to consider relocating. Thank you for this opportunity and I'd like to introduce Ms. Vanita Naylor. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Bernita Naylor. I'm the owner of Jabez Enterprise Group and also a published author of Get the Cheese, Avoid the Traps, an interactive guide to government contracting. We create and develop vendor talent for the supplier diversity and government contracting programs. And I'm so honored to be here today. I just want to give you a little overview of why it's important for national monuments to exist 
and the benefits that it offers to small businesses. Small businesses provide a lot of goods and services to our public lands, from water filtration to land maintenance. And through those efforts, as it was alluded to earlier, there is tourism, which helps to um, create a lot of um, opportunities for our children for generations to come. Um, there's culture, there's nature, there's history. So it's a benefit for everyone, the country as a whole. It provides a lot of local stimulation for the communities. It provides um, economic improvement, and it helps everyone. As a small business owner who provides goods and services to other small business owners, it not only benefits our business, but it helps everyone. So it's a win-win that the National Monuments exists. Thank you for having me. We'll take a few questions. Excuse me. The area is bare. I don't know how else to say it. It's, uh, it's as the picture indicates, it's a wide expanse that is virtually untouched. Now, we were here to talk about what it does for the economy. Uh, Michael Heiser, the man that he is, uh, did everything he could to keep people away from his work of art. That was on his private land. It's now part of the National Monument. He dedicated that to the National Monument. So in the immediate future, <clears throat> there's going to be lots of people come to see that beautiful thing that he constructed and the vastness of this beautiful desert land with, a, as I've indicated, um, with a unique landscape. <clears throat> so I don't know what people are complaining about, quite frankly. Maybe they didn't have anything better to complain about, but they're for Nevada was a state, 1864. <clears throat> From 1864 to the present day, there's basically nothing that has gone on in that property. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, what about the idea of President Obama perhaps creating more national monuments under Republicans, both in the House and the Senate, that express a lot of concern? Senator Hatch, well, Senator Bishop, and others. Well, remember, this isn't something that President Obama dreamed up. This has been going on for well more than 100 years in the country. The person that first did a lot with national monuments was Theodore Roosevelt. But virtually every president since then has done the same. There are certain things that need to be done, and sometimes, and we found especially in this uh, uh, do-nothing Congress led by the Republicans filibustering everything, that we have had little opportunity to do things constructively, legislatively. And that's why President Obama, <clears throat> several um, State of the Unions ago, said, look, I, I have no choice. You're unwilling to do stuff that's important for the country. I could go through the litany of things that he has done, separate apart from public lands. But public lands is something that needed to be done. I've been in Congress a long time, and um, there's, not been, there's never been anything like it uh, with this obstruction little designations of, of uh, boundary changes for parks and, and recreation areas. They virtually brought public land improvement to a standstill. So my answer to your question is yes, we need to do more. Uh, I'm looking at something in Nevada. I hope the President will start looking at it. It's called Gold Butte. It is a stunningly, not as large, by, and that's an understatement, as Basin Range, but stunningly unique. And the reason the president has not, hasn't had an opportunity to look at that very closely is that's where the Bundy family raised the hell that they did, and now most of them are in jail. So maybe we can uh, move forward on that. Eric, can I add a couple of, course. of things? Um, I'm not sure I can top that, but New Mexico, <laughs> has a, um, New Mexico has a really unique connection to all of this because you heard about the Antiquities Act and the fact that, Frank, uh, that uh, Teddy Roosevelt was really the first president to employ that in the creation of new national monuments. And the, uh, the person who helped construct that legisla legislation for Congressman Lacey was Edgar Lee Hewitt in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so we have a 100 years of history 
with the creation of places like Bandelier National Monument, where I backpacked with my family last week, uh, White Sands uh, National Monument in the southern part of the state. And we've seen that over time, uh, oftentimes the same objections are raised only to be eclipsed by the benefits uh, that we see over time. When you look at this incredible national monument up by Taos, uh, which is really sort of unmatched in our state, in Rio Grande del Norte, uh, some of the same objectionists, and I, I would point out uh, Congressman Bishop uh, being the lead, said this is a terrible thing. That, that the president would foist this national monument on the, the people of New Mexico. Well, when Secretary Salazar came out to ask my constituents what they thought of uh, the creation of this national monument, um, he asked people to stand up if they supported it, and then he asked people to stand up if they didn't support it. When he said, please stand up if you don't support the creation of this monument, in Taos, not a single person stood up yet we heard the same objections. So um, I would uh, trust uh, local delegations to be a little more in touch uh, with uh, the facts on the ground than that. And certainly it has been a good thing for my constituents and the people of New Mexico. Are you looking for other uh, designations in New Mexico? You know, I'm on the Energy and Natural Resources uh, Committee. We are currently not uh, entertaining a new, an additional uh, Antiquities Act designation but we are constantly working with local communities on locally based conservation efforts and we'll continue to do that. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Absolutely, sorry, it's so good to see you.